Hi, I'm Mr. O, here with another oh, yeah! Woo moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. It's Halloween, one of my favorite times of the year. And no Halloween is complete without a trip to a mad scientist laboratory to see all the bubbling concoctions they got going on. And one of the classic ways to make these bubbling concoctions is to use this, dry ice. Warning. 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 Normally I encourage everyone to go home and do science as it's a great way to learn. But in this case I'm using dry ice, a potentially very unsafe product. So do not do anything you're about to see me do at home. I have years of experience, training, and knowledge that helps keep me safe. Did you know that? So take a look at this. Here I have a small pile of normal ice. And over here I have a pile of dry ice. Now if you look at our normal ice, you'll notice that's very wet. The surface around it, there's a lot of water. But the dry ice, the surface is perfectly dry. But why is that? Well, in order to understand that, first we gotta talk about states of matter. So all types of matter come in three states. Solid, liquid, and gas. All matter can move between these three states simply by either absorbing or losing heat. For example, when a solid, like ice, heats up, it turns into a liquid, namely water. That's melting. And when a liquid heats up like water on a stove, it turns into a gas, namely steam or water vapor, and that's called vaporization, which is just a fancy way of saying boiling. Dry ice is made out of different stuff from normal ice. Normal ice is made out of water, or H2O, while dry ice is made out of carbon dioxide, CO2. Because they're made out of different stuff, they have different properties. For example, dry ice is white, while normal ice is clear, and they undergo different kinds of phase changes. Normal ice first melts, turns into a liquid, and then if you heat that up, it'll boil and turn into a gas. Dry ice doesn't mess with that messy liquid stage. It goes straight from a solid to a gas. This is called sublimation and is why dry ice is dry. When you put pieces of dry ice out like this, they tend to sublimate rather quickly into a gas. Now the gas though, carbon dioxide, is colorless and odorless. So it's kind of hard to tell that's happening. But there are a few things we can do to make it a little more obvious. For example, I can take a piece and drop it inside a little flask of water. See the bubbles? The bubbles are carbon dioxide gas being sublimated from the dry ice. Now, a lot of people look at this white stuff coming off here and they think that's the carbon dioxide, but it's not. It's condensed water vapor. Here I have a large piece of dry ice in an aquarium. It's been sublimating in there a while, filling it up with carbon dioxide. Remember, carbon dioxide is heavier than air, so I can actually temporarily hold it in a container like this. In fact, we actually have a large layer of carbon dioxide hiding out in here. You don't believe me? Watch this. See how the bubbles are just floating in there? They're floating on more or less an aquarium filled with carbon dioxide. You don't believe me? Watch this. We're going to take a little of our dry ice. Put it inside our cup. Remember, this isn't smoke, it's condensed water vapor. And we're just going to pour this into our aquarium. This condensed water vapor is more or less fog. And as you can see, the fog in our air is floating on top of the carbon dioxide. So we've explored the states of matter and why dry ice is dry and wet ice is wet. We hope you've been inspired to go out and have your own oh wow moment, but do us a favor, stay safe and keep away from the dry ice.